Welcome everyone to Dancing with Data. This is Ritesh and we are going to continue on our PL300 series. So as per your response, I'm going to continue on this series. We have already completed four, four videos and today is the fifth video. Our questions will be focused on data analysis in Power BI for today, which will cover uh, like, uh, like analytics portion of Power BI where we talk about statistical summary, Power BI visuals which identifies outliers, uh, grouping and binning, applying clustering technique, so forth and so on. So our questions will be more or less based on this very particular topic that is data analysis in Power BI. And as promised, every time we are going to open Power BI, PBI or say PBI service, Power BI service whenever needed so that you, you get more refined answers and confusions are less. So let's take our first question uh, based on the particular topic that is data analysis with Power BI. You build a report to help the sales team understand its performance drivers of this case. The team needs to have a single visualization to identify which factor affects success. So they are talking about the factor affecting the success. Which type of visualization should you use? So remember, whenever they talk about you know the factor affecting the success, that success can be more sales, more profit. So you start with your profit or you start with your sales. And after that, so if you see there are special four visuals over there which come under AI visual. So I have clicked on the key influencers. And let us see, uh, as per the question, if you go back and see the question, the team needs to have a single visualization to identify which factor affects success. So for example, in our case, we say more profit is more success. So if you see analyze, what do you want to analyze? So I say profit. Okay, explain by what? Maybe I can say that by state. and it is running some analysis over there so let us wait for some time so if you might if you see my configuration i want to analyze profit and explain by state uh, maybe it's not that visible so let me ex expand it so that you can see it so here it it shows you the key influencers right uh, so profit is more likely to decrease when a state is istanbul than otherwise on average so the, if the state is istanbul then your average profit is expected to be decreased so this sort of visualization is pretty much in sync with the question over there but at the same time let us see what what is what are the other options over there line and clustered column chart so this is a basic bar chart right a more or less bar chart that is not going to give you that sort of uh, analysis right uh, which involves the factors affect the success right so key influencers or say key factors over there which is not there right and uh, question and answer it's more about typing a question and getting the answers in the form of visuals funnel chart is again not applicable for this very particular question you now funnel chart is chart is more or like you know how many customers you contacted how many you converted then how much profit you got out of those customers how many of the customers were retained in the next year as well so that is more applicable for the funnel chart so the answer for this one would be the key influencers right so this is pretty much uh, okay so as I told you earlier as well, there can be wrong answers there as well. So we'll discuss about that as well. Okay, then let's go to, go to the next one. You have a data set named pens that contains the following columns, unit price and quantity ordered. You need to create a visualization that shows the relationship between unit price and quantity ordered. The solution must highlight the orders that have a similar page unit price and ordered quantity. Which type of visualization and which feature should you use uh, to answer? So let us see about this one. So whenever you talk about you know uh, relating to different measures, the first thing that uh, should come to your mind must be scatter plot. Right? That is the best chart that you can have. So column chart and the line chart, uh, I think those are those options are not going to help us because you want to relate two measures over there. But the second part is like the uh, what type of visualization, which feature you should you use. Uh, so the visualization looks like scatter plot, and I'll show you with uh, my Power BI. Uh, desktop as well because seeing is believing I'm showing you a different example over here where I'm trying to relate order shipped and quantity uh, the level of granularity that you see over there is at the level of product so you can see different product over there and also uh, we have given some effect with respect to different colors over there that means each category will have one color 
so it shows us that the office supplies is the category which is like dominating one but the, each circle over there is is it's nothing but a product name over there for example staples so you can see this staple is the one which is having good orders quantity at the same time good orders ship number as well right so that's how you can relate two measures over there so within a single order there will be different quantity right so that means this is a, that sort of product for which you get you are getting more orders and more quantity as well uh, just like an outlier the second part of the question talks about uh, you know how we can group orders that have a similar unit price so clustering would be the best one i can give you one example over there we have so i'm not showing you that how we are doing clustering but if you see here also you can see that uh, after applying clustering we have similar data points together some are in cluster one some are in cluster two and some are in cluster three we can have a scatter plot complemented with clustering technique clustering also if i talk about my youtube videos as well right i can cluster my videos on the basis of the average time run time and as i do it for the for my another uh, tableau channel because power bi is a rel relatively new one so i do clustering over there so i cluster my videos so you can say my videos having similar properties maybe good average retention time it's a judgment time over here so we reveal the solution and it shows a scatter plot of quantity order automatically find cluster so that's the technique that we are going to make use of and if you're wondering how you do that that's a one click thing actually if you its clusters are already there but then if clusters are not there then there'll be one more option over there that automatically find your cluster that's it so don't get confused or don't think that there there are a lot of things to do over there another interesting and contro controversial question over here that you, you are configuring a microsoft power bi data model to enable users to ask natural language questions by q a you have a table named customer that has the following measure customer count is equal to distinct count that means we are trying to get the distinct count for the customer id over there so users frequently refer to customers as subscribers you need to ensure that a user can get a useful result of subscriber count by using q a so that's what that that means that we need to feed that information to power bi engine that some of the users can refer customer as subscriber so it should be able to, to detect that to show you this you from the scratch i have come to my power bi and i am just opening my q a so here we can say uh, sorry so we can ask a question over here like this is an ai bi sorry but that's the beauty right so we want to have a subscriber count say customers count say customers count okay that's it so it shows us count of customer id so what they are saying that we should do something with respect to this uh, feature q a so that if someone come over here and say subs subscribers count then he should be able to see something so right now we don't see anything so for that actually you need to add a, uh, a synonym right so that will help power bi to pick subscribers as customers and so forth and so on so if you see there are a few options over there if i go to tqna you see that field synonyms are there so right now i am in under sample superstore and we will try to find that very particular customer id and maybe we can say this as uh, subscribers right subscriber maybe that's it and uh, we come out of it and now we'll try to uh, ask the same question with subscriber so i say subscribers count right and here you go now we are getting the answer with the count of customer id it makes more sense to place that very particular field right rather than uh, adding this name to a table so we are going to that very particular field so that's what i think the answer should be the answer should be add a synonym of subscriber id to the subscriber customer id column so i went to this very particular column customer id and maybe i could have given the name as subscriber id over there maybe we can do it like that as well subscriber id to be just be in sync with that or oh, not not if sorry let me write it again subscriber id i can say the same thing 
subscribers count so as we have given the different name right so we have to say subscriber id count right because we have changed that to subscriber id now let's do the other way maybe let us try this way add synonym of subscriber to the customer table maybe i can also show you the other way to do the same uh, so for that i need to just uh, show you why this way i go to my data model and from there uh, i can just show you where is the sample supposed to this is the one go to the properties and if you see from here also you can do something this is your uh, table and you have a synonym at table level if you if you see over there right and if i say uh, subscriber over here right? subscriber so this is at table level and if if if, if i click on a particular field for example uh, i was talking about customer id right customer name customer id so this is now it that this is the synonym that i can put over here as you can see it's it's already being displayed over here customer id customer subscriber region over there and say subscriber id so now it will work right so if you see that the the answer is fully distorted when i give the table as subscriber over there because when you put the table name because it won't make any sense right it gives you the count of samples per store the, rec the records over there right how can you replace a field with table or vice versa so all the answers look very doubtful over there adding synonym or subscribe to the customer table does not make any sense it gives you a it gets you the overall number of records over there that that's what you don't want this looks pretty okay right this looks much better uh, as you can see uh, if you put subscriber id instead of customer id that works but the only thing is that then the question should be customer subscriber id count by q a right so i don't think uh, it's uh, it, it could have been framed in a better way, but I don't think B should be the correct answer for this one. This looks better. The only thing is that here you should have subscriber ID count by QA. It cannot be at the table level, it should be at the column level only, right? So maybe uh, this explanation will help you to come out of this confusion. I hope so. So that's it for today, and I hope that this series is really helping you in your preparation and I'll meet you again next time with the last version or say part of this particular series that will focus on the workspaces so this is Ritesh signing off from Dancing with Data Power BI because data is data, everything goes